Hey everyone, today we're going to be discussing three intermediate drills to improve the teamwork and chemistry within your roster. But before we get into them, I first want to touch on why and when team drills are most beneficial. So let's start with why first. Drills are generally used to target and refine specific points of play and are often focused on weaknesses of the player or team. By making these a primary focus, it allows for more repetition and discussion on how to improve the skill than is typically available during an actual match or even a scrim. Now this isn't to say that scrims cannot have focal points. I think they should all have at least a couple of goals in mind for improvement. However, we are looking for a way to practice with a strict purpose to develop specific skills without all the other distractions of a scrim or a match. Now when should you be using these drills? That requirement will come down to the skill level of the individual player or team. There becomes a point where near mastery of these skills will leave diminishing returns from most drills. At this point, scrims are far more important in developing game sense and pacing in a way that you can only find at the highest levels. So for teams outside of Pro or Master, I would recommend using the offseason to run a couple of drills per week and follow them with a one or two set scrim. This is ideal because you're not working around scheduled league matches that are taking up practice days. As the season begins, I would limit it to a single drill each week to focus on weak points you've noticed after matches, and by halfway through the season, drills should be set aside and the primary focus should be developing through scrims at around the same or higher level than your team's current ranking. And lastly, while it certainly helps, you don't need to be on a team to get the benefits from these drills. However, they all require 7-8 players, so you will need to make a few friends in order to set them up. With that, let's get into the three drills your team should add to its practice schedule. The first is going to be an upgrade from my previous drill video covering 3v2 keepaway. By increasing it to 4v3, it will create possession practice for the offense while defense uses a mix of man coverage and chain defense to disrupt the other team. What makes this better than the previous iteration is that it increases the pacing within the playing field. Our goal here is to improve passing accuracy and geo callout communication, as well as develop disruptive defense skills that teams need to transition into possession after creating a turnover. The rules are as follows. Play on one half of the arena, set timer for three minutes and 30 seconds, four to five rounds, set one point to a single team, make sure the points carry over, play all rounds, Defense needs to connect three passes after turnover. It may seem silly at first, but this is very similar to possession drills used in sports like soccer or basketball. Over time, you should notice an improvement in connected passes during matches. This drill is built to develop chemistry around the three-point bubble. I've seen so many teams work the disc downfield but struggle when it comes to finally placing shots in the goal. This is another drill that benefits both sides though. On offense, we're working on passing into the final quartile and practice on driving into goal or hitting cut passes against a fully set up defense. Now on defense, we're working on our coverage communication, how tightly we're sticking to our opponents without getting stunned, and our goalkeepers are getting more shot attempts to practice saving. For this, run two or four seven minute rounds. Since we're actually shooting on goal, we won't be able to use the running clock without responding. Instead, you'll just need to create a timer on your smartphone to track each round. I do recommend muting enemy teams so that comms don't get cluttered, and at the end, communicate to your teammates to stop and wave their arms in the air to let the other team know that the round is over. As with all of these drills, turnovers do not mean the play ends. Defense needs to be able to earn their possession, so be sure to connect three passes before turning the disc back over to the offense. From there, move back to the reset point and run through the drill as many times as possible over seven minutes. Over time, the team should become far more comfortable playing around the bubble. This last drill, while similar to half court keep away, lets us focus on movement through the middle of the arena as well as setting up for scoring positions. Since the middle of the arena acts as a bottleneck, it creates the most difficulty when transitioning from the defensive to offensive side. Therefore, we use this drill to practice maintaining possession back and forth through the arena. You may choose to focus on clear chain, pass style possession, or a mix of both. As your team works back and forth, you should be focusing on the skills developed over the last two drills. Since the timer is running, you won't be able to shoot the score and instead will just tap the disc on the goalpost before going the other direction. Again, all turnovers are following the three pass rule before giving the disc back to the offense. So with that, I encourage you to add these drills to your team's arsenal. If you feel like this video has helped, please give it a like and be sure to subscribe so you get notified of more drill videos in the future. Also, let me know in the comments what you think or if there's a skill that you would like to see drills for and I will see what I can come up with. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you in the arena.